thank you all for being here. I'm very happy to uh, to have you all here. And now I think is the moment of it's your turn for Mr. Jesus uh, Kominidis and Martin Diyamas to learn uh, things about marketing. Grandfathers and great grandfathers. Okay. Uh, and Tom's, were, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and there's an army base as well with this name. And how did your father uh, decide to go to uh, immigrate and uh, especially to Australia? Uh, so did my you know father. Story? Yeah, my, my father is. Um, he, he was an orphan during the war, as so many people were in the 40s, and uh, grew up in orphanages and uh, was uh, had a very tough childhood and when he was uh, 22 I think he uh, emigrated to Australia on a boat like many Greek ships did uh, and went to Australia um, and he worked in uh, for the immigrants in, uh, in Australia they gave them some pretty tough jobs uh, mm -hmm. they were working in uh, foundries making steel uh, or mining and my dad was uh, mining in, in Kalgoorlie mm -hmm. which is gold mining and uh, that's where he met my mother, uh, who Your was a nurse. Your mother come, come, comes from Germany. Yeah? She's German. Uh, and she was a nurse. And uh, at the time, uh, my father couldn't speak much English. My mother couldn't uh, either much. So they had a German English and a Greek English dictionaries. And they were used to sit under the street light in the street and uh, talk to each other in, uh, through the dictionaries. And, uh, you know how it is, how love happens, and... Um, you are the first child. I am the first child, yes. Okay, and you were born or grew up in the desert? Yes, yes. so they, when they got married, they, they got a job together far out in the desert. So mining companies were what doing... What kind of job? Uh, so mining companies were doing exploration and trying to find new deposits, so geologists and so on. The first job they had was, um, with no experience, they had to build a town. To build a town. To build a town from nothing, okay. um, uh, like a set of village, a town. Yeah, for a hundred men to come and live okay. and do exploration. Mm -hmm. uh, that place is called Wingelina. And it it's, sounds like a western. Yeah, we just imagine red desert to the horizon, a little bit of spinifex grass, uh, Aboriginal communities mostly there. And oh, there were Aboriginals there. Yeah? Yes, Aboriginals have been living there for. You know, sixty thousand years. So. Were, no, I mean in this uh, region. And yeah. How did they uh, react with the with the Europeans or the? Well, Australia has a, a, a difficult history with the Aboriginal uh, 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 population. Um, so there's already been a couple of hundred years of that before, um, and uh, not great, I would say. Um, but um, look, pretty good. I grew up with with Aboriginal. I was the only European child out there. Did they speak uh, English? Uh, yes, yeah, they did. Okay. You know, rough. So, what, which was the name of, the, of this town? This town. So, they moved around a lot of places. Which was the name of, the, of, the, of this town that they, they built? built? It's called Wingelina. 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 And we also lived in Warburton and uh, all these little places out around there. So, you were a Greek, German, Australian. Uh, kid. Yeah. And all around you were Aboriginal. Uh, Aboriginal kids were my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, their mothers would, you know, look after me for the day. Uh, okay. would, uh, I would go off with. Uh, I had a dog at one point. Uh, there were not any and, other uh, uh, white kids. No. Not at no. The time. Not not where I was living. No. Not so until I was about twelve. Were you feeling different? Well, I, yeah, I guess. Uh, I um, every. Every two weeks or three or four weeks, um, a big truck would come up through the desert bringing our supplies, food and water and things. And oh my God, there was no water there. 
Uh, not a lot. We had rainwater we would collect, but sometimes it was all running out. And uh, we had, uh, um, the truck driver used to bring his wife, and his wife uh, was into science fiction. And she used to bring me science fiction books. Mm -hmm. And so from a very young age, like maybe six, I was reading science fiction non-stop. So a lot of it was about... Can you call in title? Of these, what, what, with uh, Clark or Isaac? Yeah, or? Heinlein and Bradbury, of course, all these classic old ones. But the very first book I ever read was, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, oh, damn it. It's about Mars. Oh, it's just slipped my mind right now. But um, a lot of it was Mars, right? So I was reading about Mars and science and computers and technology, and I'm living in the desert, basically in Mars. So, for some reason, I the always knew I would that, get into technology, even though I was living in the desert. The feeling was that uh, you were living on Mars, yeah? The yeah, Mars. basically. And your only connection with the external reality was the, the radio. Yeah, so... The, the school, short waves. The, the school I attended, it was called uh, School of the Air, and mm -hmm. that's... There was no school there, in this little town. There was a, uh, No, in most of them, no. No, there wasn't. Um, some there was a local school, um, but for c continuity, I was in the School of the Air, which was over shortwave radio. Okay. And shortwave, you have to, only one person can speak at a time. It's like CB radio. Ah, you, can, you can talk to your teacher. Yeah, so my teacher was 1,000 kilometers away, mm -hmm. uh, and the signal had to travel up to the atmosphere and then down again, it had to bounce okay. onto the atmosphere. Right? We had a huge antenna. Uh, you know, like 20 meters high to send the signal. And you had a normal school day for six hours, let's say, yeah, talking well, to the CB and the the, the... the... So we used to, in the morning, get together, the whole class, on the radio, and we would talk uh, for an hour or two. So um, your, your co students were remoted all around the... the yeah, the, the my class was about eight children, maybe, and they were spread out over the whole... The whole area which was 500 plus okay. kilometers wide um, and they were like me also very isolated living in little farmhouses and different places were you feeling the um, lonesome there not at all not, not at all I, I i grew up very uh self-reliant so i i'm very comfortable with being myself and looking after myself and, uh, and is it true that you have as a pet uh, kangaroo we have many pet kangaroos yes. uh, Kangaroos are the best pets, by the way. They're like dogs, um, but... And they make, of course, they're very tall as well. Well, but now, yes. yes. And they, and they, they have your kangaroos rather tall and rather aggressive. Uh, well, when, when they're normally standing, they're about this high, I guess. They can go up on their legs <laughs> like this. They're like giant... They have a pouch, of course. They're yeah. like you can, giant you, rabbits. You can put things in there. They're like giant rabbits. They're more like dogs. They're more like a dog, a, a, a dog that can jump, and um, they're very friendly. They like. So you can walk the kangaroo. Yeah. Oh, they follow you. Yeah. They come with you. Yeah. Okay. I used to, you know, they, they love a good, good pass. You know. And the other thing that uh, I happen to know that you uh, enjoyed as a teenager was playing drums. Yes, yeah, I'm a drummer as well. Uh, and actually, uh, for my birthday... Um, to Which is 20th of August. Yes. Have you done your research? Uh, <laughs> you started... Listen to what, hap what happened. This guy started his now huge company, Moodle, in 20th of August. Correct. Well, I, I released the software on the 20th okay. of August. Is it something that uh, accidentally happened? No, it was intentional. Okay. I, 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 I was ready a few weeks earlier, but I, I saved it until my birthday to release it. Okay. But I was going to say, a couple of weeks ago, uh, my father actually gave me a, a, a bazooki. Um, so I'm now learning the bazooki, which is a lovely instrument. I love it. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to play. So, But I, I mostly do it uh, in my spare time. I make So you listen to music? You like music? I love music, of course. Mm -hmm. I love all music. I make a lot. Of, I produce music now, too, in my spare time. I remember that there was this uh, group, Australian group, BT. Uh, yeah. They were very popular. Of course. Yes. And they were they were coming from Australia, no? Uh, I think they did. Yeah. The, yes. Gibbs, the Gibbs. They did. The Gibbs. They? Yeah. The Gibbs brother. Yes. They did. Yeah. So, 
you can you can you find the first trace in your soul and in your mind of this Moody idea? Um. So many. So I was used to learning over the, the as we said, uh, over the uh, radio. But also uh, the rest of the day, mm -hmm. every couple, every two weeks, a little aeroplane would come and fly in with our mail, and it would bring a uh, paper like my my homework to do. So for most of the day, I was doing homework on paper. It's correspondence school. Mm -hmm. um, this school, I. They've been operating for a hundred years, actually. In the early days, they used to send this the paper by horse, right, long distances or camel. Uh, but, but now they use the radio more and aeroplanes. Um, so, yeah, I was very used to that, and it seemed normal and natural. It, it wasn't until much, much later, um, after I did a computer science degree, that I was working it at a university mm -hmm. and um, started to get the web was new. So I was the university's webmaster. Anybody okay. know the term webmaster? Anybody know this term? There's a few nods, a few people. It's not so common anymore, but the person in charge of the website was the webmaster. Can you tell us, define as webmaster? Well, the way I did it, you have to imagine me with long, curly black hair, um, a, a long beard. Um, I, I, I had a job at the university where I used to go around the, the whole university, which was 20,000 students size university, um, and help everybody with their IT problems, mm -hmm. whatever it was. So one minute I'd be with the uh, vice chancellor uh, helping him with his email, and the next minute I'd be with the janitor helping him with his email or some other issue, right? And I got to know everybody on campus and they were all there many, to know Were there many PCs those years in the university? Uh, yeah, there was early, you know, Pentium PCs, uh, early Macs on the Novell NetWare networks, things like that. Uh, no, there was Windows already. Windows was. Okay. We're talking in the early '90s, mid '90s, okay. and um, so uh, the internet was just coming in in the mid '90s, and I was using it heavily. This is before the web, mm -hmm. but internet before the web. So you didn't have web pages, but you had uh, you like terminals, you could type text and you had uh, messages and things. So I was using it very heavily. Um, I had a, at one point I had a, uh, a three month relationship with a woman from Texas online before the web. Uh, I was uh, 17 at the time and after three months I discovered she was 40. And, uh, and a liar. Yeah. And a liar. <laughs> and a liar. Um, but, so I was using the internet very heavily when I was young there, but then at university, uh, the web was coming in and everybody was like, how do we use this for education? How do we use it for education? Would you, and that's those, when I years, to those years, the early 90s, predict that the internet would become a, a parallel universe and that would be, become something so significant for the everyday life of everybody? For me, I knew. Like I, because the science fiction, like for me, this was the start of the science fiction was coming true. It was like, okay. oh, finally, we're connecting everybody through this technology, mm -hmm. and I was like, I want to make, I, w I really so want to make. So you want to find your own role in this process? Yeah. So I was uh, uh, making prototypes of Moodle. Mm -hmm. I uh, started teaching some courses, and I had real students, which were my experimental hamsters uh, or guinea pigs, to start experimenting on and I started making little prototypes of Moodle and I was practicing and making stuff and uh, it got bigger and bigger. And when did you actually uh, what the term, write this, your, your software, create your software? Well the first design of Moodle was about 1999 mm -hmm. and my very first working prototype was, I made many prototypes actually. Mm -hmm. um, the, the first prototype that I think was really Effective was for some reason I was sent to China, to Beijing, uh, to work on a government project, and um, the government the, it was the globalization funding from Ausaid, right? And they sent me there to to help. And the university said we want to put this course online, and I said, well, I can do that for you. And they said, okay, can you finish it by Friday? 
And there was no such thing as online software. There was WebCT, but it cost $3,000 and they didn't want to buy, buy that, and that was very basic. I said, oh, I can make something for you. So I sat down for about five days in an office, mm -hmm. and from scratch, I made a whole prototype LMS for them. And we put the course online, and it was all finished, design and everything, um, and then I went home. So and there was something doing. that gave you, uh, made you believe to yourself very much, eh? that you can do it. Yeah, well, I'm always, I've always been a, you know, a problem solver, and I, 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 mm -hmm. I, I just believe, you know, we, we can manipulate our environment. All this environment around us was built by somebody. Everything is designed by somebody for thousands of years. You never, you didn't, you never had the fear of, uh, to fa of failure. No, never. No, and you so, had never failed in something. I mean, in your, in your field, not in. Your oh. Well, I've had failures, sure. I fail all the time. I mean, failure is a very important part of learning, mm -hmm. but it's a natural part of learning, and then you just, you fix that, and you go on. That, that's, that's, uh, that's how it works, yeah. I know, this is not one of the questions that I have written down. I, I don't know any of your questions. Are you, are you religious at all? Uh, I would say, I, I used to be a very big atheist, like, I was like a, a very annoying, I'm talking 17, 18, mm -hmm. I would go up to religious people on the street and start arguments, start having very atheistic arguments with them. Now, my spirituality has increased, I would say I'm more close to Buddhism okay. these days, and I, I believe if that uh, if you define, and I'm also a scientist and engineer, so if you define God as everything, the atoms, everything. If you say that is God, then a, a lot of religions actually start all seeming very compatible. Okay. Um, and so but I, your, your, I your father remains a Christian Orthodox. Uh, I was christened uh, Orthodox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and your father remains one. Not really. Not so much. Uh, so I'm it's not this no, no. of the of the Greek immigrant. No. Who goes together with his church. It's, when you have a Greek father and a German mother, um, there's, and they're talking to each other in English and, and living in Australia in the desert, like there's not a lot of culture gets through, right? It's all kind of a bit of everything. So I've always seen myself as a global citizen. So everything was mix and match. Yeah, yeah. exactly, mix and match. All right, let's go to the to, to, to your module. <laughs> okay. So you had the idea as a as a student eh, in the university. Uh, I was a teacher. I was a, an, um, I was actually a staff member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, my, my most successful prototype, which we're all still using, mm -hmm. um, I was working on it while doing a PhD, mm -hmm. um, because I was at, I was doing my experiments, and I thought I need more, uh, I need more education theory. So I did a master's in science education, and then I started my PhD in education. And I was building and testing and doing these things, and uh, I, at some point, it got very big, and I just left the university, and I left my PhD, mm -hmm. and I just started doing it full time. So, uh, when you decided, or when you realized that you had to start a company? Yes. When? How? Oh. I mean, you started a company, and then you had um, an office and uh, some employees. So, how did the, it go? the company is a structure to mm -hmm. support the project. Okay, yes. The project was first. Um, at the time I created the company, there was all, I already had maybe 300 collaborators mm -hmm. online. I already had uh, thousands and thousands of users. There were banks and universities and everything already using it. And then I thought, I need a company to kind of start handling the numbers, you know. Yes, but yeah. you need a company to, 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 to have the royalties, but you don't have royalties, eh? At that, time, at, at that time, I was just like a, a person, um, a single person business, you know. And, I, and somebody would say, can you help me with the Moodle? And I'd go, yeah. And they say, we'll pay you. I said, that's even better. You know, so. but Moodle is, was and is and remains free, eh? Oh, it, absolutely. 100%. But there is another model, model workplace, yep. that is not free. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, the the challenge with free software or free anything is how you make it sustainable. Mm -hmm. And you look in nature, 
uh, look how animals live. Uh, they they don't have companies. They don't have businesses. Um, the bees have. Do, well, they don't. Have, it's not registered. <laughs> <laughs> so they have a they have a, a, a communist collaboration, perhaps. But um, that's it. So it's about building structures to support the mission, and um, and they've got to be sustainable. So life must be sustainable and free needs sustainability to be strong. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of what I've done since starting Moodle is I've started realizing that, oh, okay, uh, there is a lot of energy around Moodle. Mm -hmm. How do I focus some of the energy towards paying people to make Moodle better and better? And so that's the business model that had to be created to do that. And that's the partner model primarily. Uh, and I want to say that Wide Services, and, and Yannis in particular, has a very, very, uh, and we didn't discuss this, but I want to say to you that you have a very high quality approach to everything you do. And even this event, right? It's very, right? Very quality little location. Look at all these people. I hope you all have a chance to talk to each other as well, because there's a lot of very interesting people in this room. Since, um, since I don't know, I come from Asma. But How I, I, I will put it uh, in a rather naive way. Yeah. Since it's uh, free, how do you get? How do you make money? So that's that's how do you it's, it? it's about the quality of thing. We're reading Zen in the art of motorcycle maintenance, right? So this is uh, how do we have high quality in education? You need high quality approaches and services and people who believe in that and people who want it to happen regardless of payment, and then, you know, payments need to happen. We need to exchange people's time for money, and money, you know, we all need to have a roof over our heads. So, Workplace is one, it's like a Moodle Plus, it's Moodle with some extra features that are particularly good for workplaces, mm -hmm. and that is not as open as everything else. Everything else we do is 100% free and give away. This one is only available through our partners, and that's, that's to make the partner network work better and to make that, that work. So when you, when you use Moodle Workplace and you use a, a Moodle partner, you're actually supporting the project and allowing more free software to go on for years and years. Do you believe, uh, Martin, that we could have in the future, or even now, uh, digital classes like you had, I mean, uh, for the children not to go to the school uh, literally, but to attend uh, through the network? Well, it would be, I mean, yes, this already happens, but... Um, is it something good? Not always. Not always. I mean, you can overdo it, and I think uh, we are all feeling the, the effects of the last few years and what isolation feels like, mm -hmm. um, what it feels like to not be close to people. Um, addiction to social media, um, like, we are all... So we're all feeling that there's something mm -hmm. not great there. Mm -hmm. And we, we've got to stay human. We've got mm -hmm. to stay connected. It's very important. Um, but when someone reads one of your books, they're not, yeah. they're not with you at the moment, but your thoughts do come strongly through into them. My vision would be to have all together yeah. around me and talk to them. Yeah, yeah, I think there's... Like the Paleolithic. Like the tradition of Athens, yes. right? I mean, yes. this I, I, I'm a very I strong believer that the uh, original uh, academy uh, is a, a great model, a, a high quality model. Mm -hmm. I often say that, in fact, the highest quality learning that's possible is, in fact, a one to one mentor. Mm -hmm. That's like the pinnacle. If you have a 100% dedicated mentor, you can't get better than that. That's literally the best. Um, everything else is kind of industrialization or mm -hmm. efficiency mm -hmm. or economies and we're just trying to spread education more thinly but in the mix you need technology it is very convenient um, it does allow collaboration to a level much okay. different than you we can fit this many people in the room but online we could have a million people right now and the experience would be as and there are millions of people that uh, in the mood that, that are moodlers Hundreds of millions. Hundreds yes. of millions. Yes. I mean, it's a huge uh, thing nowadays. It, and it goes huger and huger. It continues to grow. To, it can to develop uh, ad infinitum. Well, I mean, we'll run out of planets eventually, probably. <laughs> but, I mean, 
look, it, it's uh, there are many, many other ways to learn around, and it's it's a uh, it's it's a tool in the mix. We, because we're an open source project, we don't operate like a Silicon Valley company where it's like you know exponential growth forever, and we're going to take over the market. We don't think like that. We mm -hmm. we're like we're a community making a tool for ourselves, and as long as there are people who want to make a tool together, we're going to be around for those people. Let me ask something. Uh, with the percentage of the educational organizations mm -hmm. that are Moodlers, and with the percentage of the companies, of the, let's say... Companies versus universities yeah. and schools? Um, I, I don't have exact numbers on those at all. You because say actually, half and half. I don't ha I have very few numbers about who uses Moodle at all. Mm -hmm. um, because it's open source, people just take it and use it. And they never but you cannot, know, you cannot trace them. To, to no, 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 no. And that, that would not be very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't track people. <laughs> so you don't know who are the Moodlers? You cannot, you cannot tell us the profile of a Moodle? Uh, well, inside Moodle is a registration button. Mm -hmm. And you, anybody can press the button and it will send the information to us and then we have a big database of people who've done that. But every time I meet a group of people and I say, who's registered? Mm -hmm. It's usually about one-tenth. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm guessing it's a lot more. but. Could you, could you tell us all to, to uh, do you know the percentage between, uh, the analogy between the motors that use the mobile phone and the ones that they make it through the laptop? Uh, look, not exactly, but it, it may vary on day to day, even on one, one site, one month to month. Um, but a lot of people, obviously, the mobile devices are the way we're going to be interacting with the internet more and more all the time. So a lot of what we're focusing on now is making that mobile experience better and better. Mm -hmm. So that uh, eventually, as I'll show you, if uh, the, the, the wear, things we wear, mm -hmm. uh, headphones, you know, people walking around with little headphones these days, um, VR glasses, AR glasses, mm -hmm. uh, these devices we're wearing will be, education will be kind of streaming all the time. Just like mm -hmm. social media, but more focused on progressive learning towards a goal. Did you st do, do you still collaborate with the same people? I mean, do you have a group with whom you started 20 years ago and they're still the same? There are some, yeah. There, mm -hmm. there, uh, uh, I mean, it's been 20 years. Uh, mm -hmm. People's lives have changed. A lot of them are volunteers, okay? So they, they come and go as their lives change too. Um, but yeah, there are some who are still there from the beginning and uh, some of them, employed in my company and work with me very closely. Yeah. Which is the most strange or funny project that uh, Moodle is used to? Um, oh, so many. Um, there is, uh, like, the, the biggest the biggest Moodle installation I know has mm -hmm. three and a half million students. It has uh, like 150,000 teachers uh, and it's the Open University of China. They have a staff of something like 40 people just maintaining that infrastructure. And it's huge, it's very customized as well. Um, and at the other extreme, I know of people who use it for homeschooling. So two parents as the teachers and one student. Right? It's like, and it, they manage their homeschool this way as well. And I, th I just think that's, it's amazing that one thing can have that breadth. Are you familiar, I mean, you, you're gonna be a professor the University of Paris, an honorary um, professor, doctor. Am I going to be an honorary? Do, do I get to call myself a professor? I'm not so sure. You are already. You have already two honorary PhDs, eh? doctorates. Uh, I have two honorary doctorates already, and I'm getting my third, this from, is your third. from the University of Paris tomorrow. Are you familiar for, uh, with the educational system in Greece? Not as much as I will be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you like, how did you, how, how did you, are, you are here in Greece for now 20 days? Uh, 15 days? Maybe, yeah, two weeks I think. Roughly. Two weeks. Yeah, I've been on, I had a little holiday in the island. Is it your, fir your first time? No, uh, maybe six times before I've been okay. here. Okay, yeah. and the first was when? Uh, I was 10. You were, ah, you were, you were getting back. Yeah, we, my parents left the desert, we came here for a holiday, not a holiday, a, a trip to visit relatives. We went back 
And you went by airplane, not by boat. By airplane, yeah. My, airplane. my father traveled by boat. Yeah. I believe very much in the glance of somebody that comes from elsewhere. So I, I, would, I, I would ask you to tell us your three things, four things, about Greece in general. Mm. Which is, uh, what, what uh, do you like the most here? Don't, don't use, don't mix yeah. with your origin. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, find uh, what, what would detect you. Uh, there is uh, th something I've been really look looking at lately is the this culture of conversation, of dialogue, the agora that's everywhere. The the th this goes back for it's like the longest thing that keeps going. Everybody here loves to discuss. Mm -hmm. I love that, and I and and, and loves to flirt at the same time. Uh, do they? Okay. <laughs> Um, well, uh, so they, uh, I haven't picked up on that, I have to be more observant. Um, the, that, that alone, I don't, I don't see that in other countries so much. Other, other cultures, they're more separate or more formal with their discussions. But here, everybody, it's so easy to start a conversation with anybody in Greece. Mm -hmm. You just start and it keeps going. And I, I, I think that... And I believe that the Greeks uh, speak English in general. That, that does help me a lot because I unfortunately never learned Greek. But um, no, the, the conversational aspect. It's never too late. Yeah, I. I'm Tell us something in Greek. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, but but I I I, um, I know a lot of words. I just can't speak. And tell um, us something that you don't like at all. Yeah, that you say okay, guys, oh. you have you have. But I had a big list of things I like. I have but. a. I, I love the romantic nature. You maybe I think you hinted there, but I think Greeks are very romantic. Mm -hmm. um, I, I sometimes say my romantic side is from my father, probably, and my more engineering side maybe more from my mother, maybe, the <laughs> German. Um, but it's I, I think Greeks are very romantic in, in the full sense, you know, just believing in love and believe you know, brotherly. All the, the Australians don't believe. They have all these different words for love, right? All these different types of love. Yeah. So that's that's really. Very, very cool. The world needs more of that. Yeah. Australian, don't believe in that. Well, I mean, yeah, but it's not so public. It's not so accepted. It's not so normal, right? It's more, yeah. it's, they they're more English. That, uh, it's like English American kind of. It's Ninety-five percent of our songs yeah. talk about love. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Rebecca. Yeah. Uh, That's no repetitive. Oh, I love it. Yeah. We have to go together. That's uh, why I'm learning the Mazurki yeah. now. I want to play some Rebecca. Where, where do you live now, permanently? I live in Perth, mm -hmm. um, and it's. I was going to move before the pandemic. I was actually looking for a, a, an apartment. I was going to move to Barcelona because we have a, a big Moodle office in Barcelona. We have a lot of stuff happening in Spain, and I love Barcelona too. It's a very beautiful city, um, like Athens. Now you are a European citizen, a Greek citizen. Yeah? Yeah, I just, uh, in the last year, I became a Greek citizen. For was me. it difficult so, for you? Is it very, the bureaucracy very... It, it was for me tough. because my father had to prove he existed. Uh, <laughs> because a lot of the documents were lost in the war. He had to prove he was married. He had to prove he had children. He had to prove... And, but you imagine the paperwork backwards and forwards from Greece. It took but a long time. But you were not honorary, given the... No, I have a passport. Okay. Yeah, I have a, I'm using my Greek passport. I mean, yeah. you were not invited by the president of democracy to give you the passport. <laughs> <laughs> this happened to to his road. Oh, yeah, oh. his road. I didn't know. I don't know. It's a, it's a writer. He's, oh. he's a writer, very well known, uh, British, and I cannot recall her first name now. Susan. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> no, I got it just because my father Victoria, is Greek. Victoria. Yeah. That if you have, if your father is Greek, you can get a citizenship. My son is also a Greek citizen now too. Same reason. He's 18. Yeah. Long live to him. Yeah. So, guys, uh, don't hesitate to ask him. I mean, I believe that uh, I asked the most of them. Yeah, very good questions. questions. You should be a writer or something. <laughs> <laughs> ah, another thing. Ah, you okay. really enjoy Mojito so much. I, I did, I did. Uh, it, Not it's, anymore. It's the official Moodle drink. 
the mojito. Yeah. It, and that started... Well, that, that's when you have, have to have an official drink, yeah. or is it the joke? No, no, it is. It's the official, it's what we all drink when Moodle, when we have a Moodle moot, a Moodle conference. Uh, we, we is Mojito Australia? No. No, it's uh, South America somewhere, Caribbean, I guess, or is it Brazilian? I'm not sure. Argentinian, actually, maybe. But um, we have a variation, the mango Mojito, because that makes it orange. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, your official color is uh, this? Uh, it's the orange. Very yeah, orange. So, yeah. And you always uh, uh, wear something orange? Yeah. Usually, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. My car is orange. It has, a, it has Moodle on the license plate. So mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm real. Do you believe that all these things, I mean, to have as a company uh, an official uh, color, an official drink, uh, like it reminds me of a, a flag? Yes. A symbol. It is. Exactly. Are these symbols necessary for the people? Yeah, it, communities need a, f a flag. They need yes. a something. You know, a, look, look at football teams, right? It's it's very I mean, human. Uh, it could have a song as well. It could. We have one actually. You have one. We have an official Moodle song. Yeah. Really? It's it's a tune. Could you could you sing it? I can't sing it. No. No. It's, Just, it's, please. Start. <laughs> uh, no, I, it, it's it's very hard to capture in voice. I'm not a good singer either, really. But Do you it, have lyrics? Not yet. Oh. No, but what we the approach we take in because it's like an open source tune is that lots of people have produced different versions of it. So there's like okay. a trance version and a rock version and a kind of a mellow thing. And so we can say that we're a tribe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's self, you know, open doors. But self you don't happen to know the youngest and the oldest, <laughs> the oldest especially. Mm -hmm. Well, that probably. Oh, the oldest Moodler. Yeah. And in fact, mm -hmm. it's probably Moodler number two, because the very first. The oldest. I mean, the oldest Nate. Yes. Also, um, I, I put Moodle on the internet, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't tell anybody about it. And some guy in Canada found it. His name was Jacob Romain. And he said, oh, he wrote me, I'm installing it for my girls' school. I'm, the, I'm like the IT guy, woodwork guy, metalwork guy, cleaner guy for this school. And I'm installing it for the girls at my school. And uh, we got talking and I realized he was something like 85 years old. Then, then 20 years ago. Is he still alive? I don't think so. Okay. He, I, I did meet him uh, again about uh, probably seven or eight years ago. He was quite old in his okay. 90s, but, but I, I, don't, I, I, hope, I hope he's alive. Yeah. But he was very, I mean, that's amazing. The, and, and I was already like Canada and like schools, like it was meant for universities back then, right? I wasn't even thinking of that. So, yeah. You're very amusing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you can have your own show on the television. <laughs> Oh, well, that's a good idea. We have a bit of a show, a little double act going on here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, any right. questions from us guys, from you guys? Nothing? Do you accept indiscreet questions? Indiscreet? Yes. Oh, of course. I'm an open source guy. I even leave, <laughs> I even leave the kitchen <laughs> cupboards open and my wife is not happy about it. So. You better ask them questions. So obviously we say we said anything. Yeah. So yeah. So thank you very much. Hey. So it's a great pleasure. Very unique experience for me. Yes. Don't do that. Yeah. Let's go to a European tour. <laughs> you can write my biography. Who looks younger? <laughs> well, I am younger, that's why. <laughs>